good morning children good morning children in this second session of the class regarding the advent of the europeans to india once again i will recollect the information we discussed in the last class so in the last class we discussed how the europeans are arrived to india how the europeans are arrived to india and who are the europeans are arrived to india at first time so in this class we will continue the topic with the remaining essentialities in that lesson so first one will be suez canal suez canal so why do we need to discuss about suez canal in the arrival process of the europeans in the arrival process of the european so here suez canal built in the year 1869 in egypt suez canal built in 1869 in the egypt so that will be connecting in between red sea red sea and the mediterranean sea red sea and the mediterranean sea remember carefully suez canal suez a huge canal constructed in the year 1869 in egypt that will be connecting in between red sea and the mediterranean sea before the construction of a suez canal the the europeans are used the route which is discovered by vasco da gama before the construction of the suez canal in the year 1869 for a trade purpose the europeans are used the sea route which is discovered by vasco da gama the sea route discovered by vasco da gama through that route the the ship had to pass the ship had to pass cape of good hope the ship has to pass cape of good hope it is a southern most tip of africa southern most tip of africa the the, the sea route discovered by the vasco da gama to travel in the route the ship has to pass cape of good hope it is a southern most tip of africa while we are learning the word cape of good hope you may remember one name that is none other than bartholome diaz first time bartholome diaz tried to find out to see route to india at that time he reached to the cape of good hope after that vasco da gama also traveled in the same route by passing cape of good hope after that he reached india that is calicut region in the year 1498 in the year 1498 so here the topic is here the concept is through the sea route discovered by the vasco da gama that is through the cape of good hope the distance in between the distance in between london and mumbai the distance in between london to mumbai the distance in between london to mumbai that is approximately 10800 nautical miles the sea route discovered by the vasco da gama through that uh, through that route the distance in between london to mumbai that is 10800 nautical miles here what is the meaning of the word nautical miles the distance over sea route that is measured through the nautical miles one nautical mile equal to one nautical mile equal to 1.85 kilometers 1 nautical mile equal to 1.85 
kilometers. So, if you are multiplying 1.85 kilometers into 10,800 kilometers, approximately, you will get 20,000. So, the the distance in between London to Mumbai, if you take into consideration in a kilometer wise, that is 20,000 kilometers. That is nothing but 10,800 nautical miles. But after the construction of the Swiss Canal, half of the distance will be reduced, half of the distance reduced in between London and Mumbai. So, if the, if the ship will be travelling through the sewage canal means the distance only 6200 nautical miles. 6200 nautical miles. So here, half of the distance in between London to Mumbai will be reduced. This is the one of the key factor encouraged the Europeans to do trade with the Eastern countries as well as India. That's what that's what the reason why that the concept of Swiss Canal is very important. It is the one of the motivating factors factors for the Europeans to do trade with the eastern countries. Remember carefully, in the year 1869, this canal was constructed. This canal will be connecting in between Red Sea and Mediterranean Sea. It is constructed in Egypt. Here, remember carefully, 1 nautical mile equal to 1.85 kilometers. Through the, through the through the sea route discovered by the Vasco da Gama, the distance, between, the distance in between London to Mumbai, that is 10,800 nautical miles. If the ship will be travelling through the Suez Canal means, the distance is only 6,200 nautical miles. So, the construction of the Suez Canal encourages the Europeans to do trade with the Eastern countries. That is all about the topic Suez Canal. After the Europeans are arrived. Who are the Europeans are arrived to India and how long they ruled in our country? First of all, arrival of Europeans. Arrival of Europeans. Already we know Portuguese. Portuguese. Portuguese after. Dutch, after that English means British and finally French. The Europeans, the list of Europeans who are arrived to India means Portuguese, Dutch, English and French. See, with the arrival of Europeans to India, not only the history of India, the history of European nations is completely changed. With the arrival of Europeans to India, the history of India as well as the history of European nations also completely changed. In that process, first we will discuss how the Portuguese peoples are arrived and how long they ruled in our country. First one will be Portuguese. Portuguese. I have already told you in the year 1498, 1498, what is the year landmark year? Vasco da Gama arrived to India. Vasco da Gama arrived to India, he reached the Calicut region. Calicut region in Kerala. Calicut region in Kerala. At the time, that is the region which is ruled by the king. Jamarin. So, Jamarin invited the Vasco da Gama to enter into that particular region. After the arrival of the Vasco da Gama, the second person, the second Portuguese person who arrived to India as a viceroy, the second Portuguese person who arrived to India as a viceroy, that is Francisco D. Almeida, Francisco de Almeida, Francisco de Almeida. So he is a Portuguese viceroy. Why Francisco de Almeida is an important person means he implemented one policy that is known as blue water policy. Blue 
blue water policy implemented by Francisco de Almeida. Blue water policy implemented by Francisco de Almeida. So, children, the person who arrived to India as a viceroy from the Portuguese government, Francisco de Almeida. So, here he implemented one policy that is known as blue water policy. Here you may get one question what is meant by blue water policy? Blue water policy is nothing but maintaining supremacy over sea route. Maintaining supremacy over Maintaining supremacy over sea route than rather than land route that is known as blue water policy. After Francisco de Almeida, one more important Portuguese person who arrived to India, Albu Plata. The another important Portuguese person who arrived to India, Albu Clark. Albu Clark is considered, considered as real founder of Portuguese. He is considered as real founder of Portuguese. Albu Clark is considered as real founder of Portuguese. Here question may ask. Why Albu Clark is considered as real founder of a Portuguese in India means in the year in the year 1510 in the year 1510 Al, uh, Albu Clark captured Goa Goa from Bijapur Sultan Bijapur Sultan in the year 1510 Albu Clark captured Goa from the Bijapur Sultan. That's what the reason why here he is considered as real founder of Portuguese in India. After that, Goa becomes one of the important administrative center of Portuguese in India. I am already told to you the first Europeans who arrived to India for the trade Portuguese and the last two vacate also Portuguese. Here the small territory, the small territory ruled by the Portuguese for a long period of time in India that is nothing but Goa. So after that the remaining Europeans are arrived who are not, which are none other than English and French. After the arrival of English and French slowly the Portuguese power is declined in India. Listen carefully, 1498 Vasco da Gama arrived. After that, Francisco de Almeida, blue water policy, maintaining supremacy over sea route. After Almeida, Albu Clark arrived, he is considered as real founder of Portuguese in India because in the year 1510, he captured Goa from the Bijapur Sultan. I hope everyone is clear with this topic. So, the first Europeans were completed. That is nothing but Portuguese. After that. So, after the arrival of Portuguese, the second Europeans who arrived to India for a trade purpose, Dutch. Dutch. Basically, Dutch people from Netherland. They are from Netherland or Poland. Netherland or Poland. So Dutch United Dutch East India Company. United Dutch East India Company. Established in the year 1602. United Dutch East India Company established in the year 1602. The main aim is to conduct trade with Eastern countries. Why United Dutch East India Company is established? 
the question may ask like that you have to write in order to do trade with the eastern countries especially with india united dutch east india company is established so now after the arrival of these dutch people to india they are captured some of the islands they are captured some of the islands in the eastern countries those islands are very rich in spices those islands are very rich in spices so here indonesia indonesia java sumatra java sumatra indonesia these are the important islands which captured by the dutch people these are these are very rich in spices along with that dutch people also established some of the trade centers at surat machili patnam and nagapatnam surat machili patnam nagapatnam indonesia surat machili patnam nagapatnam and kambi and go these are the places the important trade center the important trade centers of dutch in india so here with the arrival of english and french with the arrival of english and french they are unable to pay they are unable to face competition from the british as well as the french that's what the reason why dutch people sir vacated from india early so we can say that so they are very they are limit, their trade is limited with the only islands after that they hand over these islands to the british people and they are vacated from the india so we can say that the ruling period of united dutch east india company as well as dutch people are very limited in india after dutch people sir arrived the important europeans we are going to be discuss that is english which is none other than british so portuguese dutch and french especially portuguese and dutch their interest is only limited for the trade but here after the british peoples are arrived initially they are only concentrated on trade after that by observing the political situations in india by observing political situations in india they want to get political supremacy over the our country that's what the reason why that will be resulted most of the years ruled by the english english people in india so apart from the topic first of all how they are arrived and where they are established important trade centers okay children now we are going to discuss about how the british people sir arrived to india listen carefully what are the important presidencies of the british in india means we have to be considered three places in india which are nothing but kolkata mumbai and madras kolkata mumbai and madras these are the important three trade centers of the british in india so in this concept how the english how the english people how the british are captured these three places initially here in this topic chronology is very very important years you must remember in a order first of all in the year 1600 in the year 1600 December 31st December 31 December 31st Queen Elizabeth Queen Elizabeth declared given a charter given the charter charter means here act given the charter that this charter gave permission to the East India Company to to do trade with India for 15 years. 
for 15 years 15 years Listen carefully, in the year 1600, December 31st, Queen Elizabeth given a charter, charter means act, that act will be saying that East India Company got permission from the British government to do trade with Eastern countries for 15 years. Remember carefully, East India Company is a private owned company, it is not interlinked, it is not uh, connected to the British government. It is just only a private company. This private company got permission from the British government to do trade with the Eastern countries for how many years? 15 years. That is the major thing happened in the year 1600. So, East India Company, British East India Company established in the year 1600. British East India Company established in the year 1600. After that, after that, the Mughal Emperor, the Mughal Emperor Jahangir, the Mughal Emperor Jahangir gave permission to the British people. The Mughal Emperor Jahangir gave permission to the British people. Gave permission to the British people to establish their factory at Surat. Establish their factory at Surat. Listen again here. 1600, 1600, East India Company got permission from the British government to do trade with the Eastern countries. Officially, officially, the activities of East India Company started in the year 1613. The activities of East India Company that is started in the year 1613. So after that, Mughal Emperor Jahangir gave permission to the British people to construct the first warehouse that is at Surat. Here, what is the meaning of the word warehouse? Warehouse. What is the meaning of the word warehouse? Warehouse is nothing but the place where the place where the place where merchandise the place where merchandise is stored. Here merchandise means here products or goods. Goods. Warehouse means the place where Merchandise store, merchandise store that is known as warehouse. Here, merchandise means here goods. The place is actually warehouse means there are huge walls constructed around the warehouse. In that warehouse, the British people they used to they they, they use that warehouse to store their goods. So here, 1600 East India Company is established. East India Company established from 1613 onwards. The activities of East India Company are officially started in India. After that, Mughal Emperor Jahangir gave permission to the British people to construct their factory at Surat. Next. So what is the years we discussed so far? 1600, 1600, East India Company, East India Company, after that 1613, activities, activities of East India Company, means functioning of East India Company started and after that, Jahangir gave permission to the British people to construct their warehouse at Surat. Now, in the year 1617, Sir Thomas Rowe, Sir Thomas Rowe is an ambassador from the King Court James I. So, the King of England, James I, sent one 
royal ambassador to the court of Jahangir. To the court of Jahangir. In the year 16, in the year 1617, Sir Thomas wrote. Sir Thomas wrote is the royal ambassador. Is the royal ambassador from the James Bond court visited Jahangir court in order to ask permission to conduct trade in the places which are related to the Mughal dynasty. So here, 1617, Sir Thomas Rowe, he visited from the James Bond court to the Jahangir court in order to ask permission to do the trade in the remaining places of the Mughal emperor. After that, in the year 1639, in the year 1639, Britishers, Britishers taken Madras Madras from the king from the king of Chandragiri in the year 1639 in the year 1639 British taken Madras from the king Chandragiri and there they constructed Saint Fort. They constructed one fort. After that, in the year 1668, in the year 1668, the British people, especially the British king Charles, Charles II, Charles II, Charles II, gave Charles to gave Bombay Bombay to the East India Company to the East India Company 1668 the King of England Charles to gave Bombay to the East India Company for the annual rent 10 pounds for the annual rent 10 pounds 1668, the King of England, Charles II, gave Bombay to the East India Company for the 10 pounds. After that, in the year 1690, the Britishers are purchased three villages near the river Ugli near the river Ugli which are nothing but Sutanauti Sutanauti Govindapura and Kaligata Kaligata in the year 1690 British has are purchased, British has are purchased in three villages around the Ugli river that is Sutanauti, Govindapura and Kalikata. So these three villages combinedly developed as a Kalkata. So in that, in that way the British has are captured three important presidencies of British in India that is Bombay, Madras and Kalkata. And gradually what happened means Britishers are taken the complete responsibility of these three places and after that they are implemented their own criminal and civil laws over that three regions of India. That's what the reason why three important trade centers of the Britishers in India that is Calcutta, Mumbai as well as Madras. Okay children. Okay children, so again I will recall the chronology that is regarding to the British ruling in India. 1600, East India Company established. 1613, activities of East India Company started in India. 1617, Sir Thomas Rowe is a royal ambassador from the James Bond court, visited Jahangir court. For what purpose? To take permission from the Mughal, Mughal emperor to do trade with the remaining places of the Mughal dynasty. 1639, Britishers are taken Madras from the king of Chandragiri. 1668, Charles II 
gave Bombay to the East India Company for the annual rent. Annual rent means every year East India Company has to pay to the British. How much amount here? 10 pounds. After that, 1690, Britishers are captured three places around the Hooghly River. That is Sutanauti, Govindapura and Kalikata. Gradually, these three places developed as a Calcutta. So, these are the important three presidencies captured by the British people in India. So, gradually they are implemented, they are, they are taken under control and they are implemented civil laws as well as criminal laws in that three presidencies. That is all about the English ruling, the arrival of Britishers to India. And finally, the last Europeans who arrived to India, that is French. French. French East India Company. French East India Company that is established in the year 1664. 1664. 1664. French East. French East India Company established in the year 1664. It is a government owned company. Government owned company. In the year. So this is French East India Company established. Government owned company. After that, 1668. French people also established their first warehouse at Surat. Surat. After that, in the year 1674. In the year 1674, French people purchased Waliwanda Pura. Waliwanda Pura means you can say that French people are captured or purchased Waliwanda Pura from the local Muslim Pakir. In the year 1674, French people are captured. Waliwanda Pura from the local Muslim Fakir gradually. This Waliwanda Pura at, pro, at present it is called as Pondicherry, one of the union territory in India. Pondicherry or Pudicherry. Pondicherry or Pudicherry. So we can say that the important trade center of French in India that is Pondicherry in the year 1674 it will be captured. So here one of the remarkable thing we have to be noted down here the person who arrived to India as a governor from the France is none other than Duplex. Duplex. Duplex is a French governor general who arrived to India, who arrived to Pondicherry, who arrived to Pondicherry. His major intention will be in order to consolidate the French power in India over Britishers. The major aim of Duplex as a governor general, he want to dominate the British ruling in India that will be leads to the lot of conflicts in between Britishers and French. Britishers and French that will be leads to the Carnatic Wars. So the important trade center of French in India that is Pondicherry is the important trade center. Mahe, Karekal and remaining trade centers also will be captured by the French people. So here the intention of the duplex as a governor general that will be leads to the major conflicts in between Britishers and French that will be led to the Carnatic Wars. That will be led to Carnatic Wars. So the information related to the Carnatic Wars that we will discuss in the next class. Okay, my dear children, I hope everyone are clear on everyone is clear about today's topic today so far we discussed about 
Suez Canal. The construction of the Suez Canal after that, the arrival of Europeans in that. We discussed about Portuguese, we discussed about Dutch, we discussed about English, and the chronology also we discussed. And finally, we discussed about the French rule in India. So, in the coming classes, this discussion will be continued with the Carnatic Wars. So, uh, it, it is a sincere request to the all the students. You have to be noted down all the key points and also do the work which is assigned by your teachers in, in this online classes. Thank you.